the living room block is a pretty straightforward block. Uh, most of the pieces are pretty large. We do have a couple of little challenges here that we will address as we advance in sewing this block. I'm going to follow the numbering indicated on the pattern. Uh, so I'm going to start with the sofa first. What I have done is I've gone ahead and laid down my registration marks and I went ahead and uh, embroidered the stems and the lamp, uh, the poles of the lamp because I just figured it was going to be easier to do that before I started applicating the pieces. But so let's start with the sofa. Um, the only piece here that uh, I've dealt with a little bit differently, I'm working with fusible applique again. So this is the piece that goes here. And what I did do was I have cut out um, the middle part of this because uh, I didn't want it to be that stiff. And so since there's so much fusible, I decided it was best to just go ahead and uh, cut out the middle part. And so the fusible is just on the edges. So that's the only thing to point out here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to use a blanket stitch as I have with the other blocks uh, for this part of the applique. I'm going to pause here for a bit um, to point something out. Uh, in the pattern um, I did use two different colored, uh, two different red fabrics. One for the back of the sofa and one for the cushions. And even though they're different fabrics, they're so close in color that I feel that the um, it kind of gets lost. So I need a little bit more definition so that you can, the, these cushions really stand out. Now one way that I could do this is to use a marker just to run the marker down the edge of the cushions to outline them, but it's going to be very hard to find a marker that isn't too dark or too light. Um, a red marker probably would really get lost in this and a black marker might be too harsh. The other way would be to use colored pencils and there there's probably more flexibility. I could probably find a colored pencil that's kind of like a maroon, a little bit shade darker to outline this. Then I would have to use a fabric extender to protect that pencil uh, so that it doesn't fade in time. And the other option, which is what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to use a darker thread to run a straight stitch along the edge of the cushions all the way down to here, just to give it a little bit more definition. Okay, and so here um, is that line, that one single a straight stitch with a darker fabric. It's very subtle, but it gives uh, enough definition so that you can see the cushions clearly. So here's the finished sofa. I also ran that little um, straight stitch around these pieces with a darker thread, and that's given this uh, good definition. Next is the um, little stool here with the uh, plant, the potted plant. And uh, what I decided in this case is, because this is a wall hanging, and I am using fusible web for all of these pieces, I've decided not to use a blanket stitch to cover these the way I've done in previous blocks. I'm just going to do a raw edge applique, which means that once these are fused down, I'm just going to run one straight stitch here with a matching thread along these little pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and do the lamp too. Uh, mainly because I'm using the same fabric as here, so I'll use the same thread. And then uh, for the plants, I'm also going to do a raw edge applique, but I'm going to come back and show you exactly how I do it in these cases where you've got lots of curves. So I'm going to go ahead and do the stool and the pot because I've already um, embroidered my stems here. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, applique this part and then I'll come back and show you how I do the leaves here. Okay, so uh, once again to recap, I've fused and just put a straight stitch through all of these pieces, raw edge applique, uh, as well as down here. Uh, I went ahead and I appliqued the pot, which I used a blanket stitch for, as well as the lampshade over here. And then I've gone ahead and I've fused 
the leaves to the plant, but I haven't um, stitched them down yet. And so what I'm going to do is here, I also am going to use a raw edge applique. The difference is that for most of my applique, I use a, an open to toed foot. Okay, and so I've used it for all the blanket stitch and for this raw edge applique. But that would be kind of difficult to work with here because you'd have to be stopping and starting a lot to get around all of these ins and outs in these plants. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my free motion foot and um, free motion stitch. So I will go around and in and out all of these pieces and I will be using a matching thread for this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've stitched down all the leaves and um, actually the thread wasn't exactly the same color but by stitching over this it gives the leaves a little bit of texture which is kind of cool. And so that was actually pretty easy to do. All that's left now then is um, our pictures. Right? These pictures and I'm going to do this exactly the same way I did it in the other I think there were two blocks where we had um, pictures on the walls. And so um, I will layer them, you know, the, that would be the one and another. So just fussy cut some favorite fabrics, whatever you like. And then remember what I've done is, since there are usually three or four frames, um, I, the, I cut out from the back to make sure that I don't have all of this um, uh, feasible web, you know, building up there. And so just, and the last one, I guess, the last one you can leave. If it's a smaller piece, you can leave. So just build your pictures, um, fuse them, and finish applicating them, and then we'll be done with this block. Okay, so here's the finished block. Uh, let's go over some of the things that we did today. Um, one of the things that I did was, uh, on these two fabrics that are very close in color, I ran a darker line, a, a straight stitch with a darker thread, just to de define this a little bit better. I used raw edge applique, which means I just stitched one line along the, these little pieces. And I used a, a um, quilting foot, a free motion foot for the leaves here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, you can see just slightly that uh, there are these tiny little wrinkles in some of these spaces, which show how when you're doing um, machine applique like this, you can often, or any type of applique, actually it happens with hand, the hand applique also, you do get a little bit of the, um, I, I guess, um, just these little wrinkles that come through from shrinkage. And I measured the block and um, in this particular block I lost almost a fourth of an inch in the width. Not so much in the height, but I did lose some in the width, which explains these little wrinkles here. This will be lost in the quilting process. But it is the reason why I always cut my blocks uh, like an um, inch and a half to two inches larger than um, the finished size because of this, the shrinkage that can take place from uh, the applique process. Another thing that I didn't point out was in this particular block, uh, unlike the previous blocks where I've used invisible thread, here I did match my thread colors to the fabrics. Why? Uh, no particular reason other than maybe it was just in the mood for some color and just to do something a little bit different today. You have to switch uh, thread a lot and uh, which is the reason why using invisible thread is an advantage because then you can use all the same thread for all of your pieces. But that's it all in all a pretty easy block. Thank you for watching.